presided over by the mainstream media. The media's ties to leftist politicians go much, much deeper than to any one candidate or any one scandal. In fact, for much of the Obama administration, it was impossible to tell the media from the political operatives because they switched their positions so frequently. Eric Erickson wrote an excellent summary of this in 2017. Just to give you some idea, Jay Carney. Jay Carney was the press secretary for Barack Obama, but he was only the press secretary after he was a Time Magazine journalist covering the 2008 election. Jay Carney's wife, Claire Shipman, continued to work in the media as a correspondent for ABC. Richard Stengel also left Time Magazine with Jay Carney to work for Obama. Shally Murray wrote at the Washington Post until Vice President Biden hired her to work in his office. Her husband, Neil King, worked as a reporter for the Wall Street Journal until 2016 when he left to work for, I'll give you one guess, Fusion GPS. Linda Douglas left ABC News to work in Obama's White House. She then returned to mainstream journalism at The Atlantic before she became head of communications for Bloomberg, by which I mean the media company, not the politician who owns the media company. <laughs> Sasha Johnson, a senior political reporter at CNN, left journalism to become Obama's Transportation Department spokesman. Jill Zuckman of the Chicago Tribune also went to work in the Obama Transportation Department. How about at the United Nations? Over at the UN, Obama's UN ambassador, Samantha Power, worked as a journalist for US News, the Boston Globe, and the New Republic before she entered the administration where she played a key role in spying on the Trump campaign during the 2016 election. Douglas France and Stephen Barr both left the Washington Post to work at Obama's state and labor departments, respectively. Also at the Post, Ruth Marcus married Obama's FTC chairman. Politico's John Allen left to work for former DNC uh, DNC chairman Debbie Wasserman Schultz before he went back to Politico and then later worked at Vox.com and, and NBC News. Then there's Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo, <laughs> currently employed by CNN. Some people refer to him as the Fredo of the Cuomo family. <laughs> I would never do that, but some people would do that. And before anybody gets excited, I am allowed to say that word because I am Sicilian. That is our word. It's not a big deal. I'm going to have to check with the chief diversity officer to make sure that I've... <laughs> the deputy assistant deputy chief diversity officer. Chris's brother. Who is Chris Cuomo's brother? Chris's brother is the current Democratic governor of New York. Who's Chris's father? The former Democratic governor of New York. Before he worked at CNN, Chris worked as ABC News' chief law and justice correspondent and the co-anchor of the ABC News show 2020. How about George Stephanopoulos? You remember him? George, the current chief anchor and political correspondent on ABC News. That guy, he's got to be pretty objective, right? He's the chief anchor. You know, that's, so, that's the big job. Not only did he work for Bill Clinton's presidential campaign, he actually served as communication director for the Clinton White House, and he also served as Clinton's senior advisor for policy and strategy. And that is just the writers and reporters. I haven't even gotten into the executives yet. When you turn into the mainstream media executives, the connections become insane. Ian Cameron, executive producer on some of ABC News' top shows, is married to Susan Rice, Barack Obama's national security advisor, who famously used the mainstream media to sell the administration's lies and Benghazi cover-up. In the name of CBS News president, David Rhodes. Do you know that name? Does that sound familiar? It might sound familiar because his brother Ben Rhodes was Obama's national security advisor for strategic communications. Ben Rhodes was instrumental in crafting the disastrous Iran deal. Ben Rhodes actually admitted on the record that he pushed a, quote, narrative to the media to sell this unpopular deal. I wonder how he got access to the media. That's so strange. Another advisor to Obama, Elizabeth Sherwood, shared a very cozy relationship with the press, you might say, and that's because she shared a bed with the president of ABC News, who is her husband, Ben Sherwood. Lest you think these connections are only to Barack Obama, let's not forget Virginia Mosley. Virginia Mosley, Washington bureau chief, vice president of CNN. Her husband, Thomas Needs, was Hillary Clinton's deputy secretary of state. That's not even all of them. I'm just tired of listing them. I could go on for another two hours. We don't have time tonight to go through all of the connections between the mainstream media and prom prominent leftist politicians. That's what makes the mainstream media fake news. The fake news is not fake because of the news they report and the news they cover up. 
It is also that, and we'll get to that in a second. But more importantly, the fake news is fake news because it's the press itself. The mainstream media are not really news outlets. They are overwhelmingly, from the reporters all the way up to the very tippy top of the organizations, leftist partisans peddling propaganda rather than reporters relating the news.